Anyway, that's what it is. Hey, this is Rand. Look, who's here? Randall Schwartz. He's the Pearl Wizard. He wrote uh, Learning Pearl and the Programming Pearl and a bunch of other Pearl books. It's like it a has, dozen Pearl books. If it has Pearl in the title, I probably wrote he it. He probably had something to do with it. At least a He's few. also a good friend and a, a consultant at Stonehenge.com. Mm -hmm. But he's also... Uh, got a little sideline. <laughs> wow. We go on these geek cruises together. Yes. You've done, what, 37? 37, 37 cruises so far, yeah. And uh, for the first 10 or 11, I talked him out of doing this, but the first 10 or 11, he would sidle up to people at the beginning of the cruise. And this was, I think, a, a good proactive thing to do and say, by the way, is your email password this? And they'd go, huh? And he'd say, you're on the Wi-Fi on the ship, and you're broadcasting your password. Absolutely. I mean, the problem is that people don't understand that they're transmitting their passwords in the clear often in many applications. If you're at a hotspot, if you're in a hotel, right, right. If, if you're, you're using, using an open network, Wi-Fi, you're going to have problems. Or well. even wired in a hotel. You're, yeah, you're, the, you're the, not so much. They usually have switches, so it's not so bad. But uh, you have to still be worried about it yeah. from time to time. Not so much when you're at home either, because usually the other users on your system are also friends of yours. Friends and family. But, but we're talking about hot, hot spots. spots about shared really spot. That yeah. first hop encryption is very important because people can come along with open source tools such as Wireshark, which we'll be seeing in a moment, to actually sniff that directly out of the air, get your passwords, get your data that goes back and forth. It's really very Let's important. Let's say you're a bad guy. We're yes. sitting here in a, we have a couple of Wi-Fi access points. They're Absolutely. open. They're un, unencrypted. Right. Uh, now, if I have WPA turned on, I'm safe. No, because WPA is still, I still have to be able to see your packets. Because you're on my network. Because I'm on your network. Right. WPA protects the entire network. It doesn't protect individuals from Internally. each other. Internally. Okay. Yeah. So it's not a problem. So no you're here. You're logged into our network. Right. Well, Let's see what you would do if, well, if, so if you were a bad guy. Here I have Wireshark running over on the left-hand side of my screen. This is freely available, by the right. way. Nothing freely fancy. Download it. It's fine. Over on the right-hand side, I'm going to log into Jaiku, one of your favorite applications. Yep. Okay. So here it is. I've come up with my screen. Now, notice up here in the, in, that it's an HTTP login. It's not SSL. It's not HTTPS. That's very important to watch out for because it means that now when I say log in here, it's sending my username and my password completely in the open in order As for me to text. log in. Now, over here, I can see that I can you find... It. I actually have this post. Let me bring it up here. Oh, yes. I love live demos. There we go. How about follow TCP stream? And if we scroll just a little bit to the so right... So you can scan... This is all the data that was sent. You scan During that it. login, if you look down here, you see you can that actually my see password. password is yeah, right. Well, it's only yeah, right during the taping. He's It'll be changed, changed it now. Back. Yes. But so that password was revealed the moment that I logged into that site. So if I'm sitting at a, at a internet cafe and right. there's a guy, you know, just a couple of things down with his laptop, he could very well be watching what I'm doing. And log in as you after you leave and leave nefarious messages or steal your data. You know where this is really awful is with your email. How many yeah. times have you changed your email yeah. password in the last two years? Absolutely. I just want to. I want to show that uh, Pounce has the same thing. It has an HTTP login, not an HTTPS. So that would have done the same thing. I won't go through the details. And when you of use that. your uh, mail program, is it the same problem? Uh, let me, yeah, let me show you also Gmail. Gmail is good because it actually, ooh, it says HTTP this time. Oh, oh no, but when you send out. it, it goes oh, to. Wait, wait, let me log out for you. Sorry. Uh, Gmail is I, one of the few things that will do it. That, but there's right. something I want to watch out for here, though. It's when I, when we first log in, notice there's an S on there for the login. HTTPS, that's what you're looking for. So that stands for secure. This posting is secure. My username, my password would not be sniffed by some program on my system. It's encrypted. But when I go bounce in and pull up an email message, notice it's now HTTP. So I've got all this uh, that random spam here. All of the mail's being sent. In right. The clear. So all the contents of this spam. Now you can change can that. The good news with Google is you can say HTTPS for everything. You can, but it drops you into HTTP first. Right. So, so you have to remember to change that if you want. There's a little Firefox plugin that will so make that So when permanent. you set up something like Mail.app or your own applications on Windows, for example, here's a setup that I have to log into my system. Notice down here in the lower hand corner I have a use SSL. So that you have to be sure Turn that, that on to right. in your email application. Now, use not, SSL. Not all mail servers support that. Though. So it's up to your ISP to be smart and actually provide this sort so of thing. So if your internet service provider doesn't, call them and say, I'm not going to use your email, I'm not going to use you unless right. you turn on SSL. Right. And then in your email client, and this works for Outlook, Outlook Express, it works for anything on yes. the Mac, turn on SSL. But even if I lock down my mail, even if I make sure I'm always SSL, I still have the problem of all the rest of that traffic so now that what I want do I protect. Do? Well, you can go to an open solution. There's uh, something called OpenVPN, that you're, you're, but your company usually has to set it's that up for you. It's hard to set up. Has to, it's hard to set up. There's also Tor, which is a little bit hard to set up as well. And slows you down. But if you go to anchorfree.com, they have this wonderful little tool. I'm going to launch it over here in the upper right-hand corner. This is absolutely free. It's both uh, Windows and Mac. No Linux, sorry, but Windows and Mac. When I pull this up, it connects me up. 
And when it connects me up, it's now encrypting everything from my laptop over this first wireless hop Is that free? to the internet. It's free. Anchorfree.com. And if you use that, com, right. nobody can see what you're doing. We're out of time, but Very that's good. a good, that's a great tip. Anchorfree.com. Yep. And you're going through Santa Fe or somewhere like that? It just comes out of, in some, like, you're, like you're in Sunnyvale, California. Sunnyvale. So if that happens to be handy, you can do that, too. Uh, we won't mention that. No. There's another reason why you might want to do that if you're in Canada. <laughs> uh, that is a great tip. Anchorfree.com. There are also some commercial services like V yes. for VPN and HotspotVPN.com. Yes. But yeah. that one's free. Yeah. Randall Schwartz is on uh, online at Stonehenge.com. A great expert and a good guy to cruise with. Go check out his podcast.